guys, welcome back to my craft room. So lately I have been seeing uh, quilling a lot on my Pinterest boards, uh, or boards, the homepage, whatever that is called, <laughs> the news feed or whatever. And I've been really um, kind of going back and forth with what I wanted to do for my plant embellishments for the swap in my Facebook group. So I thought um, I would try to combine quilling with plants. So today we're going to be doing sunflowers that are quilled. And it's, it's so simple. <laughs> I'm going to first tell you when you are cutting your, pa your paper, I actually took a 12 by 12 and I just cut it down to one quarter of an inch instead. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm going to get another piece of paper so, so I can show you. Instead of taking your paper and trying to line up your one quarter of an inch this way, it's a lot easier if you look at your measurements on this side, line it up to your quarter inch and then cut it from there. So much easier. <laughs> when I was doing um, quilling in high school, we used construction paper and it was all already uh, cut up for us. So that was kind of never like a trick that I really learned until I started using these tools. But not really, I mean, I bet a lot has changed since what I've been quilling in high school, like tools and stuff, but I can't imagine that it's really that much different than, you know, just the basics of quilling that I did uh, in high school. So I took my 12 by one quarter inch, uh, well, just a quarter inch, not one and a quarter inch, just one quarter. If you do want your, um, whatever you're creating with your quilling, if you want it to be more predominant on your paper or whatever you're putting it on, then you're going to want to do half an inch, but I want mine to be rather flat because they're going on embellishments that'll probably go on cards or pocket letters. So I don't want them to be as you know, <laughs> crazy sticking out. Now what I'm doing is I'm using water and glue and I always have a little bit of um, paper towel next to me because I'm constantly going back and forth with my water. This kind of depends on whether, well, what kind of glue you're using. I recommend an art glitter glue. Now there are certain glitter glues that are really thin and sometimes you can even water them down and they have like a little needle on them on the bottle but I really like this glitter glue it's rather thick and it is just very potent <laughs> it's gonna it sticks really well so I just went ahead and just curled up a little bit of my side there and then I put a little bit of glitter glue on there and now I'm just rolling it. You just need that little bit of glitter glue on that one top side and that's going to give you a nice little spiral, little circle kind of piece on your inside. So then you're going to un coil your curl there and depending on how my circle you kind of feel a little bit of resistance if you do it certain ways and you'll feel it like really go in its own spot on certain ways so that's kind of a feel and you're just going to take it and you're just going to push and make a teardrop shape and then you're going to go ahead and wet your brush a little bit. Just continuously wet your brush if you are doing it with brush and glue because you don't want that glue to dry 
on your paintbrush. This is actually a nail art brush, but you can use whatever brush you want. I used it because this is a very thin, small brush, and I wanted to be able to coil it around it, but you can coil it around anything kind of small that works for you. All right, so once you have your end in place, so you just put a little bit of a dab of glue on the end again, and then push it on there, make sure it dries, and then you're just going to, you could leave it like that, and that's a pretty good flower shape. Or what I've been doing with my sunflower shapes, I've just been kind of pressing it and pulling onto the teardrop part until I get a point. So just kind of round your finger on it and make it into a point there. Kind of like a flame. But that's really all you have to do to get your petal. Let me move it out of the way. And I have made seven of these. So these are the ones that you know, it's the 12, 12 by a quarter inch, cut that in half, so it's six by a quarter inch. These make, you know, little small ones, and you can put those together. If you make it to be the size of 12 by a quarter inch, it's going to be this big. If you make it the six by a quarter inch, it's going to be that big. I want... I wanted to try the big one out, you know, and see how big it actually would get. And I decided that um, because I'm, you know, working on embellishments, I kind of wanted them to be a little bit smaller than what I was going for. So I'm going to go ahead and just place my petals in a cluster here, kind of figure out the shape of my flower that I want. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit more work to kind of form them, but I only needed seven of these for the big and the small. Seven seems to be a pretty good number. And I just put a little bit of hot glue on that curl and put it onto the next petal. So right on that little lump, put a little bit of hot glue. You can use your art glitter glue as well, but I figure, you know, I would rather go ahead and use my hot glue because it's a little bit cheaper than the art glitter glue and I don't really need that much you know strength or whatever right now oops I think I <laughs> messed up my shape a little bit there but that's okay You know what? There. <laughs> For some reason I had them turned around. You can have them go different directions, but I find that I like the look of it being the same direction. And then for the last one, you put a dot on your little lump and then also on the back. And then squeeze it on in there and just push your flower together to connect the two ends. Very simple. <laughs> now you could end there um, or what I did on my big one is I just took a piece of extra, actually I had to use the 12 by 
um, one quarter, I had to use this one and it fit all the way around. And that kind of seals off all of your rough edges and whatnot. Also gives it a very predominant flower shape. But lately, well, <laughs> lately, <laughs> once I started doing the little ones, I really just kind of loved the fact that, you know, it had that kind of roughness to it. I feel like, you know, sunflowers are kind of rough, so. But to finish them off, instead of, you know, doing the little quilling center or whatever, I really wanted to give it an extra little crafty touch and kind of add a little bit more dimension to my embellishments. So I just took a brown button, put some hot glue on it, and put it right in the center. And it looks so cute. Sometimes I will go in with my finger and I'll just push some of that hot glue right up onto the that paper because sometimes I feel like maybe it will come off if I don't <laughs> just to give it a little bit more of a leverage um, just to stick together but look at that that is just gorgeous so now we're gonna go ahead and well we're not gonna use the big one to create an embellishment but we're gonna go ahead and make some sunflower embellishments you know with these so I'll be right back with all the that stuff so they could actually be embellishments on their own but I really wanted to kind of step them up a little bit more and go for kind of a you know just an embellishment ready to go straight on to something so I thought what would be fun is if we did a sentiment and then layer it on thinking some ribbon and some burlap. I feel like that's very sunflowery. But of course we'll have to see as soon as I start working on them. Oops. Okay, let's redo those. <laughs> Give it a little bit of a blow just to make sure it stamps nice and good. Seems to be drying out, so. so I figure this orange would look pretty nice with the yellow. Because I don't want to do just yellow. The paper itself is actually a yellow and white pattern paper. See there's the pattern. But you can't really see the white too well. I mean you can but it's not too noticeable. I wish I had a yellow and orange pattern. That would have been so cool to kind of have that ombre look. So this says, follow your bliss. I thought that would be such an awesome sentiment for a, sun a sunflower. Like I just because sunflowers follow the sun so I think that it just kind of I don't know I thought it was cool <laughs> I thought it matched nicely so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just trim these down to pretty close to the actual sentiment and I did it on a cream paper because I didn't want it to be that crisp of a white because I feel like that would be kind of weird uh, to go from orange and yellow to a crisp white. Even though there is white on the actual sunflower embellishments. 
quilt sunflowers, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> I thought that the white would just be kind of really strangely placed in there if I did it. So I thought cream would be a nice alternative. Kind of ease you into <laughs> the, um, the bright colors. I could be wrong and it will look like crap at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be good. So what I'm thinking is kind of like a ribbon almost. Like, you know, that would be the ribbon, but turn it this way. I feel like that kind of has a nice look to it. And then we can stick our follow your bliss Yeah, I'm actually kind of thinking maybe some red, red twine. We'll see how this looks. <laughs> Just kind of wrap it. Let's go ahead and put our sunflower on there. Make sure I'm stuck on there nice and good. And then stick my, oh, that looks so good. Let's go ahead and stick our like that. Because the quilling is open, I don't want to put hot glue in there because you'll be able to see it. Oh, I think that looks so good. You know, I kind of, oh, my arm itches. <laughs> I kind of want to go in with a little bit of a red alcohol marker, you could even do um, ink and distress it, but because I'm actually going to switch to my chisel, because I, you know, didn't do it beforehand, I'm just going to use my alcohol marker. That'll give me kind of the same effect. It will be a little bit more crisp than if you were distressing it with ink, but oh yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of them, just so they match. Since it's a set, I kind of want it to. Oh no! I'm just gonna kind of flare it out here a little bit here. <laughs> Give us some faux distressing. It's going to go under there anyway, but some of it's still going to be able to be seen. So, kind of cover it up where I can. <laughs> Rather mess with covering it up before it's on there than after. Four. Oh, I made one too many, actually. Oh, actually, I could use it as my topper. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing on that one because I'm not quite sure yet what I'm doing with that <laughs> my topper because I'm going to package them up since it's a set, you know. All right. So again, the same thing.
just tie some twine around there. I think the red kind of blends in a bit, but I think it still looks pretty good. I think if it was, I think if I did like a yellow, it'd be a little bit too strong. Because then the sunflower really wouldn't stand out very much. There we go. These are looking so good. I love the quilling. It just turned out so nice. I don't know if it's going to be something I do all the time. <laughs> I remember because like my little quilling in high school, um, I mean, I had to do it, but <laughs> I remember it, it just took so long <laughs> and these, these didn't take too long. I mean, I watched two movies while doing how many did I do here? One, two, three, four, five. So, well, I did that one with you guys. So it's not too bad. I think it's just because it's tedious. Oh, you don't even see the twine on that one. Darn. Maybe if I can. There we go. I'm going to maneuver it here. It's not glued all the way down. That's kind of cool. Kind of loops around it. I realize this one you can't even see it either. Let's see. Kind of unglue it a little bit here. There. Maybe get this one to come up here a bit more. And then the last one. Let's try and make sure our twine doesn't get covered up this time. <laughs> Go a little bit lower. Neat. All right, let's go ahead and put them all together in the set now. I've got a bunch of burlap, uh, just pieces everywhere. <laughs> all right, we're gonna need a little baggie. Kind of thinking let's use some chalkboard paper. I think that would be really cool as the background of that. All right, let's cut that down to size. So four, what do four by? five and a quarter. A little bit smaller than the actual bag itself. And then I need my foam tape, which actually I think I have some here. I don't know where my actual foam tape, well, this is actual foam tape, but I don't know where my other one went. You know, I might have used it all. <laughs> I think about it. All right. Just 
strip of foam tape here. I need to do two per side. And put the foam, actually, I'll do the foam tape right here. That way I'm not putting as much bulk. I need to do it this way, I think. Yep. Because of that quilled sunflower, it is very bulky. Even with doing the quarter inch, I still have to have I have to kind of maneuver my dimension. So if I put it on the other side, it should be a little bit better. All right. I'm just going to use my ATG. Put some adhesive on the back of, oh, it's not going to do it for me that way. Or that way. <laughs> Thing is, because it's that chalkboard. Huh. This is going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. can't use the ATG. <laughs> I could use, huh, I could use my hot glue on it because when they do take it off, you know, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use my hot glue on it and then they can just peel off the actual foam tape when they go to use it. These still stick on there real good, right? <laughs> Just the mix of the paper with the silky backing of the foam tape. It's like, no, you can't do what you normally do for embellishments here. <laughs> we got to trick you somehow. Not trick me, but put you on your toes somehow. <laughs> Gosh, even there. Normally, it's a lot better than this. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and put it in its little foam home home home. Little clear baggy home. Is it too thick though? That's the question. Oh I see. Some pieces didn't want to go in. Just gotta make sure everything is of all the dimension. Every little piece wants to not go in. Those sunflowers are just so cute. They're just coming off in the packing. <laughs> That's disappointing, but they're going to be snug in there, so I don't think they're moving much. There we 
go. Leave a little bit of gap there so I can put a piece. Oh, maybe I shouldn't use that. <laughs> That's going to probably be bad. <laughs> Trying to hot glue something on there, as we've seen. <laughs> I think instead we'll use some twine. And a stapler. Uh, no, I don't like that. Actually, this orange. Let's use that. It's not quite the same color orange, but hmm. I like the plain orange side better for this. Little topper here. go in with our twine. Oh, I wonder if that actually went. Now we can go in with our twine. <laughs> and we'll have a little bit of an anchor point. Big snowflake sunflower. Oh my gosh. Snowflake would be fun though. To quill. Oh, that's hot on my fingers. I didn't quite get on there. There we go. And then we can use our extra follow your bliss guy here. Again, we'll do kind of a T-shape and just tuck it under there. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Let's some of that air out. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. It came out so cool. Little set of embellishments with our quilled sunflowers. I love it. Oh my gosh. Hopefully the person that receives it from my plants embellishment swap loves it as much as I do. <laughs> that was so fun to create though. Thank you guys for hanging out with me while I did create it. I hope you guys are having a crazy day. Good crazy, not bad crazy. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.